Hey guys, so today I'm going to be showing you something rather different when it comes to survival, and that's how to make a primitive soup. So no clay pots, no metal pans, nothing you would really recognize from a modern day kitchen. We'll be cooking this soup entirely within an animal skin, and uh, this time it's going to be a deer hide. Any hide will do, but this is definitely a trick you want to know how to do. Now it's going to be a clam and onion based soup, uh, not because those are my favorite ingredients, but because those are things that I can find out here in the middle of winter time that I'm pretty sure I can get my hands on in quantities large enough to make a good soup. Now we're gonna go ahead and forage uh, as we find those ingredients. Hopefully we'll find a few more things to make this more colorful, but uh, we got a lot to do, a lot to show, and you'll definitely enjoy this. Let's go, Huck. Now the first ingredient that we're going after are clams, and we should be able to find those here in the San Antonio River. Now if you've seen some other videos, uh, you might have noticed that we have some fairly large clams way back in the clay and silt. Uh, I go back and fish for those quite often, but it is the middle of winter. This is the beginning of February right now, and I'm going to attempt not to get in the water. Now what we're going after today are Asian clams, and those are fairly small. They are invasive, so you pull them out, uh, eat them, do away with them. Uh, they don't really belong here, but uh, what we find is that those are going to be in the roots and up underneath sandstone rocks like this. Uh, they don't get down in the mud like the big ones do, and uh, they're fairly easy to get a hold of. This time of year though, raccoons are hungry. Anything a raccoon can sit on this rock and actually reach, uh, those are gonna be gone already. Fortunately, I have longer arms, so uh, all I've gotta do is just kinda freeze my hands and my arms for a little while, run my hands through the gravel and the mud, and we'll see if we can't uh, get a few pounds of clams. All right, these are what we're looking for. They might not look like much, but they definitely add up. Quarter size is about as big as they get out here. All right, getting a pocket of them. That's the trick. With these clams, we tend to find them in clusters. You hit the right soil conditions, the right amount of water coming over the top of them, and then get a whole lot all at once. So if at first you don't find what you're looking for, do not give up. Keep looking. Here's a larger clamshell, even though it's only half of one and empty, I can still find a use for it. That's going to be a spoon. Goes in the bag. One thing to watch for when you're out there collecting clams are to make sure you're not picking up the dead ones. This dark one right here is dead. This lighter colored one, it's got some nice earth tones to it, is alive. So you want to collect the live ones. Uh, the ones that have been long dead, like this dark one right here, it's not going to hurt you, hurt you, because it is full of mud. But uh, you don't want your soup to taste like mud when it opens up. So throw those back. Well, I'm not nearly as dry as I'd like to have managed. But after about 30 minutes, we've got around 3 pounds worth of Asian clams, which should be a pretty good meal. So uh, I'm going to keep on moving, try and dry off. It's time to go dig up some onions. Now, when it comes to onions, once you know what to look for, it doesn't take much to find them just about everywhere. Now, the trick I have is to get down here in the sandy soil where it's pretty easy to dig them out. Okay, it's like a pretty good cluster of onions right here. They're not going to be very big, but uh, you take what you can get at. Now, they're not going to have flowers at this time of year, just a uh, distinctive stem. And a lot of times, especially on those nice crisp days as you walk around, as you crunch over them, you'll smell that onion. That's what you're looking for. So, let me get my knife. Start digging them out.
That's what we're looking for. Wild onions. Well, I've collected a little over a pound's worth of wild onion, and that ought to do really well in our soup. It needs to be cleaned up, prepared, diced, but uh, it's getting to be about that time to head back towards the cooking area, get a fire started, and get this stuff cooking. Let's go up. Now we're swinging by these yucca plants, even though it's the middle of winter, and nowhere close to the season that we would usually be harvesting these to show you something. Because yuccas, even in winter, deserve a closer look. So what I'm going for is this stalk back here. All right, and this stalk is from this last year, about seven months ago. This was actually edible for a time, but beautiful white flowers, uh, big pods, those have since then uh, grown, dried, and fallen down, been eaten. What I'm going to be looking for, though, you just got to kind of find those stalks. That's really easy. What we're going to do is search down between the leaves for the pods from last year. Man, it's good, good ones. We're assuming that uh, the bugs haven't got to them. Humidity and conditions haven't made it where they've rotted. But we'll break those open in just a moment. Chances are there's going to be some seeds in here that we can use inside the soup. They're about the size of uh, split peas. They're black. And once you boil them for a little while, they taste like barley. So, something to definitely add. This one's much easier to get to. I'm going to go ahead and collect a few pieces of mesquite. These are going to help us out to be utensils while we cook. So collect them before you get your fire started. Wherever you can find them. This may seem like overkill right now, getting this much material, but you want to have everything on hand once you start that cook fire up and once you get going. So, uh, get more than you need. Doesn't look like much yet, but this is going to be our kitchen. So, unload a bit, collect some firewood. Come on up. Well, I think I've got enough firewood collected, but before I get any further, and before I forget, I need to go ahead and put my clams out there in the water. I should have done that before I got firewood, but it's a nice cool day. Got a little bit of leniency, but you want your clams to be as happy and fresh as possible. Well, we got our fire going. We gotta let that burn down to coals in order to start cooking. So we need to start cleaning up and getting some of our ingredients ready. Now, this is our yucca pod. It's a little squishy on the inside. We're here to check and make sure that these seeds are okay. Clean them up, check them for holes. 
check that out. Some good healthy seeds still, which is pretty surprising. Now one of the things a lot of folks don't understand about these yucca pods is this mushy stuff. I'm not sure I would trust it this late in the season, but when you break it open and you smell it, uh, it's like bananas or maple syrup. It's all full of sugar, so you can actually make bread out of the pulp that is holding the seeds in place uh, before that dries out. But kind of chancing it this late. Food doesn't stay fresh that long. And go ahead and get all these seeds out and get our pot ready, uh, as it were, and start soaking these. But that's like barley. Time to go ahead and make our pot so we can put some water in it and start soaking our barley. This is the part where you germaphobes are really not going to like this. Again, we're going to be using a hide to make the bowl, or rather the pot that we're going to be cooking the soup in. You can only get these hides so clean, especially as you move around out here in the woods. You get dirt, you get grass, you get hair on it. Really, the lesson here needs to be don't leave home without a pot. Ever. But this is how it used to be done. You fill that full of water. Throw our yucca seeds in there. Keep on getting some of our ingredients ready. I understand in a survival situation, I'd be dicing up the entire onion and eating all of it uh, after I cooked it, of course. But uh, I can afford to be picky right now. Now you might have already noticed, I had a pile of rocks here collected before I got to this cooking area. And these are not just any rocks, but these are special rocks that I picked out a little earlier. These are going to be our hot rocks that we're going to be using to cook with. So they're not wet, they didn't come out of the creek bed and they're solid. Now, as our cooking rocks heat up, go ahead and build some tongs so that I can handle them. This is a piece of uh, young mesquite. Let's see if it'll work.
it's time to go ahead and start heating up and cooking our soup. I've got two more ingredients that I want to add. One is a chili patine pepper, and those have been dried from this last season. Just crunch those up, put them in there if you're not sure what a chili patine is. It's about as hot as a habanero, so uh, it's no joke, but they grow out here wild. Uh, the second ingredient are mushrooms, and these are oyster mushrooms. Uh, understanding survival, I do not, do not encourage people to go out and pick mushrooms. Uh, they enhance flavor, but they are not very calorie rich. Uh, these are a few that I propagated myself and a few of the logs, so I am absolutely sure of what they are. In a real situation, I would not chance it. typically takes about three minutes to cook clams. It's one of the last ingredients you want to add. Check that out. Now with these clams, as they get cooked, they'll actually open up. And if you get it boiling hot enough, uh, the meat will actually disengage from the shell and all you've got to do is pick the shells out. So, there's your little piece of meat right there. A little thumb sized seem like a lot. It's a good piece of protein. So shuck that out, throw the clamshell away, and you're left with some amazing meat. Tastemakers here, but I'm not sure he's gonna go for this. He really doesn't like the hot stuff. But uh, here is our clam soup. This is after about 15 minutes of cooking. Uh, if you cook clams, you know they only need about three minutes to open up and be fully cooked. But in these circumstances, it's better to be safe than sorry. You got to balance that between not cooking them enough, perhaps getting sick and uh, cooking this too much to the point where the skin actually burns through because uh, you can cook this pot. So let's go ahead and try this out. Start out with the clams. If you boil these things hard enough, the Asian clam actually comes apart from the meat. So all you gotta do is pull that meat off. It separates easily. So there you go. It's a little morsel. You can uh, pull all these shells out one by one, put the meat back in the soup and eat it that way. I think Huck and I are gonna go ahead and try it just with the meat. Want this? Okay. He's not that hungry. But I'll eat it in a heartbeat. 
Huckleberry. Can I try it? Okay. It's not gonna do it. I'll go ahead and dry it out. It's a lot of onion, a little bit of a kick. You can definitely taste that clam in there. Now, if you get anything out of this, it's that it takes a lot more effort to make this all happen. Uh, be prepared. Try not to leave home without a pot or a pan or some kind of metal convenience where you can cook things over a fire easily. But uh, there's a lot out there that our ancestors did and put up with before they got that tech. So guys, I hope you learned something. Hope you enjoyed the heck out of this. I'm gonna eat on this for a little bit longer, but like, subscribe, comment, share the heck out of this video. Tell me what you think. And as always, until next time, pick your dog. You won't eat it. I will. Okay. Just give it a try. I told you you'd like it. Not too bad. Do you see him there? It's not a piece of grass. He's got his arms up, but the water's still a little cold. <laughs> this is plan B. If your clam soup doesn't work out, you can always start flipping rocks and trying to find crawdads. You're not that fast. Well, I say that. Got him. So, look through this moss. They travel up and down through the sandstone. Pretty good size for this creek going dry. But, uh, have lots of babies. Probably see him again in the springtime. Your flat rocks down here are perfect hiding places for these crawdads. Now, if you're going to be in a place for an extended period of time, uh, we've actually gone ahead and taken some of these flat rocks and placed them out here for this purpose, but you can make habitats for the creatures in the water. And so uh, they get a home, and if you get hungry, you know where to find them. I'm going to go ahead and lift this one up. I know they're under there. And there you go. Hopefully you can see that. There we go. That's the second one. There we go. Good size claws. Alright. Put your home back. It's not going to be the same, but... There you go. Just big enough where a raccoon can't pick it up and flip it.